Hi, this is Nisha. This video, we're going to shoot and talk about Russian 12 gauge shotguns based around the Kalashnikov uh, long stroke gas piston system, two lobe, two lug rotating bolt, trigger group, so on and so forth. In my hands is a Sega 12. This is the SGL 1294. This is the American export version of the Sega 12KS, which is the shorter barrel with folding stock. <clears throat> and here we have the Molot Vepper 12 folder. Again, with the short R barrel. Of course, both of these have 18 and a half inch barrels to comply with the uh, American laws and so on and so forth. But um, they're quite close to the Russian counterparts, and these are made in several uh, versions. Back to the Sega, since this is kind of where it all began. When communism fell in the 90s, early 90s, 91, 92, in Russia, the previously state owned factory of Ishesk became nominally privatized and was renamed Izhmosh and started to work on a line of rifles and shotguns for hunting use and they would expand later but they would give these the name of Sega which is a, an antelope type creature and uh, they were mainly originally made for hunting but soon law enforcement and eventually the military would get interested they would start to design these around 94, 95 and the Sega 12 gauge shotgun version was in production by around 1997. Now this is obviously a tactical version. They had a hunting version which is very similar in the front end here but instead of having the folding stock and pistol grip it had a traditional hunting stock with the trigger group moved to the rear. There are so many versions of both of these guns, no way can I cover them in this video. For example, these Segas, the most common barrel lengths in Russia, standard barrel would be about 23 inches for the Sega 12, and the Sega 12K would have a short 17 inch barrel. Now for import, this has to be extended in America out to 18 and a half, of course. Magazines, this is a standard eight round, which is mostly used for more tactical things. This is the hunting five round, most common in Russia, although two rounds have been made or modified to mill work. Anyway, after these were made for the civilian market initially, police began to get interested and they would start to purchase the 12KS amongst other versions. I've also seen 12S with the long barrel and folding stock, 12KS being the short barrel and folding stock. And then the military started to become interested around the turn of the um, millennium, around 99, 2000, 2001. And they put out some requirements, some things they want. And so both Izhmosh and Molot would start to work on improving a 12 gauge based on the AK. Now this Molot Vepper 12, Wikipedia says that the initial design started off at uh, Ishmash, which is, you know, there are some major similarities between these two guns, so it seems like the, 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 the design maybe started with the Sega, but it was quickly carried over to Molot, who really took it and upgraded it. And they would release the Vepper 12 around 2003. Now, whereas the Sega was designed as a hunting gun first and then became a military and law enforcement gun, the Vepper 12 was really designed from the outset for police, military use, tactical shooting, competition shooting type use. So I still had civilian applications, but it wasn't really designed as a hunting weapon. 
although you can obviously hunt with this, it's still a 12 gauge, but that wasn't what it was really designed for. Now this, because Molot produces RPKs, is really based on a pretty standard RPK receiver, and it has many RPK features we'll get to in just a minute. The Sega 12, likewise, is based on Ishmash's AK-100 series line, including the AK-74. So it's going to have more AK features. For example, this is a heavier duty receiver, wider here for the log, uh, wider barrel. But it is still a little thinner all around, a little bit lighter gun. And it's still based on a uh, more of a modified AK-74, AK-100 type receiver. The handguard is kind of unique to the Sega series. However, the pistol grip and this buttstock are pretty much straight off the AK-100 series. Now, it's not surprising that both companies would uh, kind of go with what they already knew. And keep in mind, the Sega came first, so it's not quite as refined. I'm trying to think where to start talking about things kind of comparing and contrasting. Well, let's talk about weight first off. This is about a seven and a half to seven and three quarters pound gun. Not light, but for a 12 gauge shotgun, it actually is quite svelte and handy. It, it balances quite well. It balances kind of right here, this point. The Vepper, on the other hand, thanks to its RPK heritage, is about an eight and a half to nine pound weapon. Again, several variations exist. Oh, and I mentioned on this one, the standard barrel length is uh, 17 to 23. On this one, standard barrel length is about 16.8 up to about 20 and a half inches standard. But they do make 26 and even longer barreled versions for competition shooting and uh, for export to places like Britain. So this one, Generally, the, the, the longer version has a shorter barrel. The two short barrel versions are basically the same. So, let's flip these over and kind of just get to comparing them. Jump right in. The Vepper 12 was designed more or less to suit the needs of what the Russian military thought it wanted and the police. Whereas the Sega 12 has been modified over the years. Now this is a pretty traditional earlier Sega version. S later Segas, such as the 12404, will have more of the modern features like the Vepper. But this is the really traditional Sega. Starting at the muzzle, we have the same thread pitch on both guns. Now both of these are wearing Molot factory flash hiders. But the only difference between the Molot and the Ishmash flash hider is that the Ishmash does not have the uh, wrench flats. At least the, the older Ishmashes I used to have. Maybe the newer ones they've added them. They are chrome lined. Birdcage style. Pretty short and effective. The barrels on both of these are hammer forged, chrome lined. The Sega has a two position manually adjustable gas port gas system and we have a bead front sight here exposed AK style gas tube here and a notch rear sight here this wind is adjustable there are a plethora of sight variations for the for the Sega 12 there's even a version with a sight tower out here. Now what's interesting about it, that sight tower is actually screwed on to the barrel muzzle, uh, muzzle, muzzle threads and then has a second set of threads to screw a flash rider onto it. And you also see some with the more traditional AK-100 series rear sight. Again, I'm just showing the one I have. So The Vepper 12, on the other hand, has a combination gas and sight block with a very traditional post adjustable front sight. This is a, often called a self-regulating gas block. There's really no internal mechanism to self-regulate. It just holds pressure until the bolt moves back and then gas can escape back here. These both use a puck in here to tap the, uh, the gas piston. 
but it is a non-adjustable gas block. That's the point I'm making. It has a very similar type of upper gas tube here, but this has a handguard on it. This is RPK style. It has a typical RPK 100 or excuse me, 200 series rear sight with windage adjustment. The part's just straight off. Looking at the receivers, this one has a slightly thinner receiver with a traditional smooth AK100 series top cover that's removable. We have the side rail for an optic mounted to the side. The Vepper, as I said, has an RPK receiver. Again, both of these are beefed up receivers from standard, but the RPK is still a little heavier with the heavier front trunnion fixture. We have a top cover with a polymer Picatinny rail connected to it, and it is hinged as on an AKS-74U, a crink, hinges up. And that's to give the rail a mounting fixture in the front so it holds zero because there is no side rail. Instead, we have a left side safety selector here and that's companionated on the right side by an extended, it's a very traditional AK style selector but has this extended shelf back here for the thumb. Whereas this Sega 12 just has the traditional AK safety. Now these both have this piece right here. This acts as a movable part to the dust cover to allow for an ejection port wide enough for the 12. But when the bolt's forward, it still provides some protection against debris getting in the action especially with your safety up, you're pretty well sealed up then. The biggest difference would be in the magazine system. This uses very typical rock and lock mags, like AKs. There is no automatic bolt hold open. Some have a manual hold open here. This one has the hole for it. I took it out because it was digging into my finger because it hangs down when shooting. I can put it back in if I need to. The Vepper, on the other hand, does have a last round hole open. This flange pops down when it's open. Let's go forward. This has a mag well, and the mags are pretty much drop free. They go straight in. It even has a manual hold open here if you need to lock it back without a mag in it. In addition to just being a little better and having the bolt hold open, this mag well system makes loading a full mag in much easier. On the Sega 12, you do have to kind of fight with it, especially on a full eight round mag because it is the rock and lock style, and they fit a little tight. These are still pretty new mags, so. Now, as I said before, there are newer versions, like the 404, that have copied the Magwell system, but their bolt hold open still don't seem to work as well as the Molot. Moving down, the trigger guard and mag catch are very similar, if not almost identical. Even though the Molot has this magwell, it still has a very traditional AK mag release, which is at least ambidextrous, which is good. These typically come with this oversized ergonomic pistol grip. Finger grooves. The Sega 12s can either have the more traditional pistol grip as this one, 
or they can have a larger grip like the Molot, although the Ishmash version does not have the finger grooves in the front. It's just smooth and it has, this has a smoother texture to it. The, um, the, the Ishmash grip has a rougher texture, more like the rest of this furniture. Moving back, folding stocks. As I said, this one pretty much uses an AK-74M style, except it does have this rubber butt plate. There's just a button on the side to press here. If I can get it. There we go. It folds over. It cannot store a cleaning kit because of the rubber butt plate. To release it, there's a button here, rubber button. You just press and it just uh, unlocks. Has the cutout, of course, for the uh, scope rail. And it has the cutout on the bottom for attaching something. It's just basically the standard uh, AK-74M. The Vepers stock uses, uses the same folding hinge mechanism as their RPK-S and RPK-74M. The lever is on the same side and basic same location as on the Sega, but you press it forward and then you can fold the stock over. This cheek piece flips to get out of the way. Let me push it back here. And then it locks here. Whereas this stock is made out of reinforced polymer, this one is mostly tubular steel with polymer butt plate but has rubber on the end and this movable cheek piece. Now the release on this is actually in the back here. Again, very RPK style. Like that. This one has a very stiff stock, which is generally a good thing, especially for 12 gauge. So your butt plate flips up. And that's pretty much the walkthrough of the two guns. Internally, the bolt groups themselves are extremely similar, as are the trigger groups. The biggest internal differences have to do with the magwell here and with the gas block up here. Oops, one sec. Some Sega and Bepper parts interchange, some do not. And again, there are several variations, especially of the Sega 12. I've been looking for solid examples of Russian military use of either of these. A lot of websites report that they use the Sega 12KS, but that's about it. I, I assume it's a special forces type thing where they get what they want. Generally speaking, the Vepr would be probably better for military use because it was designed for it. However, pros and cons comparing the two. Lengthwise, these two models are the same. They both have folding stocks as well. They both have eight round mags as standard. They both use the internal Kalashnikov system. The Sega is a little bit lighter weight. The Vepr, probably a little more durable. The gas system is kind of a flip of the coin. Some people like the, uh, the automatic version used by the Vepr. Some people like the manually adjustable system used by the Sega 12, especially if they're trying to shoot uh, lower power cartridges. Both of these are rated for 12 gauge, three, uh, two and three quarter standard and three inch magnum shells. Although sometimes they will have trouble cycling lighter loads. And it really depends on the individual gun. Again, both have chrome line bores. But generally, most would say the Vepr 12 is a better shotgun. Molot tends to have a little better fit and finish. But then again, for a long time, Segas were less expensive. The Sega started to come into America sometime a little after 2000. It was first imported by EAA 
and then after about 2006 it started to be imported by RAA and the last guns were imported by Arsenal and FIME so guns like this they were the ones to bring in the SGO the first guns all came in with the hunting stock in 2011 there was a big thing involving the ATF where people were afraid the Sega 12 was going to be banned. It was basically up for review. And people were afraid the ATF was going to declare it non-sporting and therefore no longer importable. So there was a little bit of a panic buy on existing Sega 12 hunters. And people had been converting them by pulling the, the hunting stock off, putting a trigger forward on it, and so on and so forth. Instead of banning these, the ATF declared them not only sporting, they even said importing them with a pistol grip and fixed buttstock would be sporting because enough people said, hey, we use these for a competition shooting and match shooting. And so they were, they were allowed to start coming in. About 2012, you started to see factory pistol grip Sega 12s coming in. And since that was approved, you started to see Vepers coming in with pistol grips. Now the first Vepers would come in with a standard rear trunnion in a uh, wood or polymer buttstock fixed. And then the next batch, with this, which this one was a part of, would come in with a side folding tubular steel stock. Finally, the, the folding versions are still coming in, or were up until the sanctions, I should, should say. They're still on the market today. They also have a fixed stock version that looks identical it just doesn't have any of the uh, the folding mechanism inside. It's just a smooth, doesn't have the latch here. Now when these came in, the folding stock was tack welded open. But many, including mine here, by the time I got it, the tack weld was already basically cracked and barely hanging on. It did the job. Now most of your Sega 12s that came in with pistol grips just had a standard rear trunnion and had a standard buttstock on them. But a few, this SGL 1294 included, came in with the folding stock. Now the only catch there, they had a internal block where the stock could only fold with the safety on. When the safety was down, it cammed a piece of metal into the stock. I'll open it here again so you can see it. If you see this slot in the bottom of the stock, that piece of metal would go into that slot and keep it from folding. This wasn't something done for the US market. This is actually something done over in Russia. Folding stocks are legal over there, but if the barrel is under a certain length, I believe it's under 20 inches in our measurements, you can't have it be able to be fired with it folded. So civilians over there with a license for a smooth bore can have the 12S, which has the 23 inch barrel and a working folding stock, or they can have the 12KS with the 17 inch barrel and folding stock. But if they do that, it, the safety has to be on before the stock can fold, therefore rendering the gun inert. So you can have a folding stock on a shorter barrel gun but only if the gun doesn't work. Of course, once in the U.S., this doesn't matter our, to our laws, one hoot. So I pulled the, um, the block out of this one immediately because it was stupid. When these are sold, they usually are sold with the eight round mags you see in them here. Excuse me, I spoke completely reverse. <laughs> They're usually sold with the five round mags Yep, you see here. But the eight rounds have been sold separately almost since the beginning. And guns like this Sega 1294 did come with an eight round mag. So the factory eight and even 10 rounds for the Vepper 12 have been, uh, have been imported by various people. Now both of these guns are no longer importable because of sanctions against Russia. The Sega 12 went away in 2014, and the Vepper 12 went away in 2017. But these were imported in quite large numbers, and whereas the rifle Vepers and Segas have really shot up in price since the, the sanctions, the shotguns are still available out there at uh, near pre-sanction prices. So they're still available, 
I thought we would just do a video comparing these, shooting them, talking about them. They're both interesting guns. I, generally speaking, prefer the Vepper, but the Sega, it has a good feel to it. It, it is lighter, and it has a very traditional AK buttstock. It, 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 I don't know, I would say it has more of a traditional AK look. It, it's a less, ta at least this version is kind of a less tactical gun. This one also has a really nice trigger. I don't know why. It's just really nice. The Molot trigger is, is a military trigger. It's not bad, but it's not great. Just a trigger. I will say the safeties on the Molots are very stiff. Makes it hard to use the shelf. And it's just kind of sharp steel. I've often thought I want a rubber coat both sides because it's just... I wish they'd kind of serrated it and put a little coating on it, make it a little nicer. I mean, they already used rubber on the cheek piece and butt plates. So they had rubber. kind of wish they'd do that. It is a heavier gun, though, as I said. Generally, the Vepers have always sold for more, but then again, they use, they've almost always come in with more features than the Sega 12s. Most Segas imported were the hunting versions, although there are the SGL 12s, a few different versions with more military furniture. And once you get up to that, they're about the same price point, really. The Sega 1294s cost a little more than the Vepper side folders. And also the Sega mags, the factory mags, are quite... Well, before the sanctions, these mags were about $100, and the, uh, the Molot factory mags were about $60. So the Molot mags were always a little bit, uh, little bit cheaper. Before the sanction, that is. Now, it seems like after the sanctions, the Molot mags are going up more than the Segas. And I think it's just because of there's a lot of these Molots out there and people need mags for them. Yep. To be fair, the Sega and the Sega Mags are brand new. Yeah. The Vepper is not. <laughs> Let's give it a minute. But decidedly, it needs to be on too, no, no question about that. Okay. Lower. Go ahead. Full mag at the stove pack from the last one. So it could just be a break in thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna reload and then see if we come. Okay. okay. Good. Almost. Almost. Let's see how many we got left or something like that. Nope, that's it. I, I've had that last that that little stove pack on every Sega I've had. Yeah. I think because you don't have the pressure from the magazine with the next round popping it out. Yeah. So I even get that on the Vepper occasionally. Right. Alright. Alright. Alrighty, I'll put five more to this. Chambers. A little right. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, five shots. It just does that stovepipe on the last round again. Yeah. And I'm gonna make it worse by flipping it around completely. There we go. <laughs> Heavy mags. Good there. Alrighty. 
Hi, me again. Just an update. The first part we recorded a couple of weeks back and um, we went out and shot. We thought we would just do a little update here of how these two worked out. Put a few rounds through each. The Sega, at the first couple of shots, was having some minor stove piping, but keep in mind this was an unfired gun before today. So after it had a few rounds through it, it seemed to smooth out. It was still having that last uh, round wasn't quite kicking out, which is a common issue I've experienced with light loads in all these AK and AR type shotguns. But at the end there, the last several mags we put through it, that was the only malfunction. So it was, uh, it was smoothing out quite nicely after having a few rounds through it. As for the Vepper, this one I've had for a number of years and it's had a relatively high round count. And it uh, had no surprises. It continues to function just fine with pretty much anything. Comparing how these shoot, the straight in magwell in the last round held open is very pleasant for the Molot. The Sega, you really have to use the manual hold open to get a full magazine to fit in because with the bolt closed, you, just, you can't because it has to rock in. And obviously you don't get a last uh, automatic last round. Although it's manual hold open isn't too bad. It is lighter. And surprisingly, the recoil is a little bit lighter feeling to me on this than on the Vepper. I do also like the nice kind of spongy butt plate and the ergonomics of the handguard and the uh, stock is quite nice. So when this works, which it was doing quite well at the end, I kind of like how it shoots better. You would think being a lighter gun than the Molot, it would have more felt recoil. But I think the Molot puts a little more gas into its system, so you feel its recoil a bit more. Plus the Molot has a more squared off foregrip in a tubular stock. If you use the cheek rest, you're above the sight, so you need to fold it away. So then your cheek is right against a polymer metal stock, and its butt plate is a little, little firmer. So. On the other hand though, last round hold open. So I would say feature wise, I like this gun. And it's definitely a little heavier, a little more beefy. And it seems to be more reliable, more ammo forgiving. But just for the ergonomics and being kind of lightweight and handy, I do like this SGL 1294. Plus the trigger in it, it has a really nice trigger. Really nice, honestly. I probably just got lucky, but this one has a really good trigger. I like it. And the folding stock is just a classic. Well, if you have any questions or comments, we welcome them below. If you'd like to post pictures and talk about your own Vepper 12 or Sega 12, that'd be great. If you like the video, please click like. If you haven't already subscribed, we'd really appreciate it if you could do that at some time. As always, this is Misha. And we'll catch you very soon hopefully in the next video. I'll see you then.